So hello, we're back again for our final eco conversation. I hope that you've had a really good day today. There's been a lot of different conversations and presentations to be had. If you want to mention us on Twitter, you can do so with the hashtag EcoFest2020. It'd be great to hear your comments. I'm really, really um, blessed today to be able to welcome Reverend Mark Coleman to join us for our last uh, conversation today, which is all about faith and activism. So Reverend Mark Coleman, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. I wondered if we could just start off by you telling us a bit about who you are, where you live, and um, that kind of thing, just so we get to know a bit about who you are. Well, I'm oh, yeah, Mark, yeah. married to Wendy. Uh, we've got two children. We live in Rochdale now. I've just retired earlier this year as a vicar. I was the vicar of Rochdale, which is like a historic title for being the town centre vicar. Uh, and I had a great ministry of nearly six years here with two town centre parishes. So that's my most recent memory. I've uh, been ordained for about 20 years. Wonderful, wonderful. Thanks, Mark. Now, obviously, the reason um, we're here today for this conversation is we're talking about faith and activism. And you're an active member yourself of Extinction Rebellion and Christian Climate Action. So um, just would let it would be really good for us to know how you got started in activism and um, when you got started what kind of things motivated you to to get into this kind of thing well i was reflecting about this i'm yes i'm i'm activist by nature i'm a doer i think most of us vicars are doers we we make things happen we have to do that um but i'd like to think of myself not just as an activist rather as a disciple it's part of my discipleship to be active in Christian justice work, Christian prayer for justice, working for peace. That's part and parcel of my Christian life. It's not just because I'm an activist. I remember when I was a curate, um, my training incumbent said to me, I was very interested in world issues. And I, of course, just then been involved recently in the 2000 campaign. It was that year uh, for, for debt justice. And uh, Jubilee 2000 he said to me, my training incumbent, very fond of him. Do you remember that? Well, I do, yeah. 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 So he said, um, he said, perhaps you can do a bit of that in your last year as a curate. I thought, I can't do that. That's part of me as a, as a Christian. So I was able to do a bit of that. Indeed, the bishop made me his world development advisor. So I had a world development role working with Christian Aid and other friends. So I think for me, the activism, inverted commas, is part and parcel of being a disciple of Jesus Christ and certainly part and parcel of being a, a minister, a priest. Wonderful. Thank you. Tell me, um, particularly when we're talking about, at the moment, um, there's, just, there's just been a big rebellion that has just finished across the country, um, lots of different actions happening. Um, I wonder if you could tell us some of the actions that you've been involved with um, recently and, and why you've been involved with them. Well, this last week, um, I've been involved in, in Rochdale, here where I live. Uh, me and other members of Extinction Rebellion, Rochdale, uh, we got a globe, somebody had the vision was to get a globe and put it on a stretcher. Others bought white coats or sourced white medical coats. And we did a procession through the town center, past the banks, Barclays, HSBC and Santander being the worst culprits for financing fossil fuel still, billions of pounds going into that. Uh, so we did a nice little drama. This was our first sort of public action really as a group. Had a lot of fun. I had a few profound conversations with people and uh, so that was that's one thing i've been doing um and also this week i've been uh, again into town into the city center of manchester keeping the social distance um and uh, there was a lovely rally and lots of speeches that was really an encouraging time uh, but i've observed uh, through the various chatting channels on on the internet how christians in london have been arrested in quite large numbers so i feel them very much on my heart really feel it's a sharp end. I've had a, a good week. It's been exciting and encouraging, but uh, for some it's got a little more edge, a little more cost. Absolutely, absolutely, Mark. And, and of course the news has been coming through about people who have been arrested, um, you may say for their activism. Um, of, now, last October, in the October Rebellion, Mark, this was you, wasn't it? Um, you got arrested. And I wonder whether you could tell us a little bit about what happened um, what led up to it and how you felt about that? Well, the, the background is uh, a lot of frustration, really, or a sort of pent up waiting. Um, it, during my ministry in Liverpool, before I came to Rochdale, uh, my two parishes there, 
uh, we got involved in all sorts of nice green projects and we had I, I, I do workshops and events but there was it was difficult work because there was, wasn't much interest and attendance was low and I would often get depressed about that side of my ministry uh, but there were along the way some wonderfully encouraging people I mustn't uh, deny that um, so when I came to Rochdale uh, I continued that and we had a few great eco events at St Chad's in Rochdale uh, but when I read in the paper, I guess late 2018 or early 2019, um, about the creation of Extinction Rebellion and Rowan Williams, our Archbishop, or recent Archbishop, was one of the signatories, I was really excited about that. I thought this is, Christians should be speaking uh, the word, the prophetic word, and uh, not just binding up the wounds. We're not just a field hospital. We are also the voice of truth and love and change and hope. Uh, so uh, when you and uh, Hannah Malcolm organised the event, probably in that, is it, was it in that church you're sitting in now? It was, yes, it was. We had our Christian Climate Action meeting um, last August here, yes. That was it. Well, I came along to that. That was brilliant. That, that, that was a key moment for me. And I think I'd sort of decided that I would offer myself for a rest, but that, that clinched it, absolutely clinched it. Then after that session, I went to a training session at the university on nonviolent direct action, uh, you know, how to prepare yourself. And I, my heart was broken by uh, seeing young women saying, you know, they decided not to have children and uh, uh, meeting a woman who's, she, she was a GP from Cheshire and her son had sort of evangelized, inverted commas, her and her husband to say, look, parents, what are you doing about this? Uh, so they too were getting involved in XR, Extinction Rebellion Doctors. So this was an exciting time for me and I felt very called to, to go to London and get arrested, which is it's not hard to get arrested when you see other people <laughs> bravely sitting on the road and you just have to sit next to them. So that's what happened, I got arrested. Um, getting arrested was a moving uh, and quite exciting occasion for me. Um, it wasn't costly. I mean, I'm, I'm a white privileged vicar and uh, the police treated me very well. Well, they do and they, they usually do and they would. Uh, so it was a very easy occasion, but, but quite special nonetheless. Uh, it felt quite spiritual. It was a time of deep prayer. I got arrested with other clergy and uh, in the uh, Croydon custody suite. Uh, it takes a long time to get processed. There's a lot of admin for those poor police and Mm. Uh, getting arrested takes a lot of time so we spent a long time sitting sharing biscuits on the floor with other rebels uh, sharing their tales there was a, a guy who, who'd done long-term anti-fracking protesting in Lancashire uh, very special guy who had been at one stage in his life to a church and he gave us a scripture uh, and then we had we discussed that it was a lovely time of communion holy mm. communion uh, oh, then wonderful. it was a bit more lonely in my cell I have to say a bit later on mm. um, and then, then you released. And when I came back to Rochdale, um, people saw me as a bit of a hero, really, which was rather lovely, but not quite what it's about. But it opened lots of conversations, and that in itself was special. Uh, some deeper conversations from all sorts of people in the town. So getting arrested was easy for me. Uh, it's not always that easy for others, and I want to acknowledge that. Um, but I think Christians are called uh, to the way of self-sacrifice and love and non-violence most certainly uh, and arrest being arrested is one way to do that thank you mark that's that's um really interesting sort of hear about your own experiences and um, there may be other people watching at the moment who are thinking how can i as a christian live out my faith i want to do this i want to be more active how can i go about doing this so what kind of um advice maybe would you give to to um, people who are thinking I want to get more active but I'm not quite sure how to. I think the first thing I want to say is you, you don't have to get arrested of course there's lots of ways to resist when when we pray we are non-violently resisting when you make a lovely banner a prayer banner or something whatever you do lots of ways to resist without uh, being arrested so and the other thing to say is I found um, doing this gave me great encouragement really there's something very depressing about not acting when you want to act it's sort of you're locked in you're denying what's stirring in your heart so we need to act reflect with others christians need to do do the work of love 
Mm. Uh, pray about it, be in a community, reflect on the scriptures, do some more things of love and hope and work for justice and for, uh, for the climate and the ecological emergency. So do something, whoever you do it with, uh, in, in your church, in your Christian Climate Action Group with XR, uh, it almost doesn't matter who you do it with, but do it with love and hope. Oh, that's, do it with love and hope, that's lovely. I think um, one of the things you've mentioned time and time again um, is this um, community, the idea of doing it with other people. Um, you know, you've talked about how when you've been on um, certain actions that you've been, it's been fun, you've been with other people. Would you say that that's a really important thing to find um, other people um, and, and do things together? Um, does, that, does that sort of help in that process and, and give you energy? It, it gives me energy. I'm sure I'm not that different from everybody else, Doctor. Uh, yes, we need that energy of a community, and I'm sure that's in a way what church is. Uh, and I've often felt uh, in the last uh, year or so with uh, this sort of activism around this area, being with other Christian disciples or other rebels who are working on a basis of love and uh, justice and mercy, you know. The, the, you're creating church there are moments of holy communion mm. um, and I think Eucharist is not just what we do on a Sunday Eucharist is when we gather and do we you know we remember the story of Jesus and we act it out in some way so that's when we create church create communion create Eucharist uh, so seek those moments find others to do it with and be hopeful because even when the press starts saying oh you're you're denying the freedom of the press cries this weekend you know so the, there was those uh, blockades in London and uh, Liverpool to stop the papers coming out it's easy to get uh, maligned and say you're stopping the freedom of the press you're destroying people's routines and things and you there are times when you'll feel as I feel quite dispirited and and that's when you need the other people and uh, a narrative of hope and uh, change absolutely um, I remember at Greenbelt last year Bishop uh, Stephen Cottrell who was a bishop then obviously he's the archbishop now um, he talked about the, the phrase, blessed be the peacemakers. And he talked about how the peacemakers that we think of as peacemakers, such as uh, Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, were often thought of as the troublemakers at the time. And I thought that was a really interesting uh, thing to remind ourselves of and to give us encouragement of. Often being the peacemaker sometimes feels like you're being the troublemaker, but actually um, that's part of the journey upon, in, into bringing peace almost. Would you, what would you say to that? Oh, I'd say that's, that's so true. And it, it, there's a funny irony there, isn't it, that uh, our children in, in primary school, I believe, are, are taught Gandhi and Martin Luther King. That's in the curriculum. Uh, but it's almost like it becomes an abstracted thing. This is from history. Well, we're, we're all in history. We're in the moment of history now, and we are writing history. Um, and we people of faith or no faith, in a way, those labels don't particularly matter. People, have, uh, people who are alive, and we're all alive here, who can choose to go the way of love and truth, can say, look, there is a climate emergency, there is an ecological emergency. Um, me doing some more recycling is not gonna solve the problem. Um, we need to get beyond the current ways of seeing, you know, our current myopic uh, social vision, and we need to act for a, for a new world, a new heaven and a new earth. Um, so looking back to Gandhi and to Martin Luther King and others who were prophets and were brave enough and drew lots of people into their movements to do the salt march or uh, all those protests, um, were, they were, it was ordinary people behind them that won the battle, not, not just Martin and Gandhi. Mm -hmm. So it needs uh, more people, more ordinary people, not, uh, not heroes like you and me, Grace. <laughs> I would call myself a hero, Mark. What a wonderful discussion um, and thank you so much Mark. I think um, something I was talking about the other day um, with some amazing young people actually in a climate conference was about the power of the truth and how if you know it's it's speaking the truth uh, to power is actually gives 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 power to the truth almost and if you think about people like Mahatma Gandhi and also people like Rosa Parks who in her very small actions spoke a truth about what is right and what is wrong then that truth can become powerful in itself. So this idea of speaking the truth, about acting in love, um, is, is so central, I think, to, um, to this movement and to, to affecting, hopefully, a good, positive change. 
Absolutely. There's power in the truth. And uh, I think this is a time, that maybe every time is a time, but certainly now people are uh, a bit cynical about the political institutions, cynical indeed about our church, and you know, they feel let down by all sorts of things. Um, so it's not the time for us to be defensive about our institutions, but to reach out, find love and truth have value. People know what that smells like, tastes like. And I think if we seek that, the kingdom of God, we may, may use those sort of words as Christians, uh, seek the truth and serve it and draw others into it, we can build a new world. Please, God. Absolutely. The truth will set us free. I believe Amen. somebody very wise said that once. <laughs> it's a good one. You must remember it's that. It's a good one, yeah. Thank you very much, Mark, for um, some of your insight and, and your words today. It's been really great. We really appreciate it. Um, and it's a great way, I think, to end our EcoFest today. We're going to have Thank a blessing you, in a minute. Um, so we're going to finish with, with a blessing. But what a wonderful uh, way to finish. Thank you very much, Mark. It's been lovely to talk to you today. Thank you, Grace. Thank you.
May this day bless you. May you be inspired and encouraged. May you find hope in the green shoots of creation. Fellowship in the community of people walking the same path and rest in the arms of the Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. Amen.